Hey guys, Mac Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode in our 357 Magnum gel block test series using five different barrel lengths. And today uh, we'll be looking at the Horner D 158 grain flat point FP XTP bullet. And this is in direct response to requests that I've had from several uh, subscribers uh, on the other XTP videos. Uh, wanting to do, see a side-by-side -side comparison between the, the 158 FP and the 158 uh, XTP uh, to see how these are doing. And so Hornady he designed the FP to be a rifle bullet. Um, and I really hadn't read up on it much. I, I had a box of them on the shelf. I actually bought a box of these by accident. I was out at the local store, saw 158 XTP, thought you can never have too many 158 XTPs. So I picked up a box and when I got home, I realized it was the flat points and uh, really hadn't given it much thought until uh, I started doing this test series. And then when I had the, the other subscribers uh, asking about it, I got it out and kind of took a, a closer look at it. And the results are interesting. Um, a little bit of a change to the, to the nose on this bullet. I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe if, let me get a... See if I can get it in here focused in. So here you can see the difference on the noses on the XTP and the XTP FP bullets here. And uh, I will say this, this, this flat point retards expansion uh, quite a bit. Uh, in the rifle bullet, uh, it, it yields itself to, uh, still expands good, uh, but, and still gives you good penetration but in the pistols, uh, it's a little bit different story. So stay tuned. We'll get turn around here and take a look at the loading. Then we'll get out to the range and you can start. If you've seen the 158 XTP video, uh, go watch it first. If you haven't already seen it, go watch it first and then come back and watch this one. And uh, and then eventually later on when I do the, the comparisons between all the different bullets, I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit more in depth. But uh, for right now, it's 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 pretty interesting test. So let's get turn around, and look at the loading, and we'll get out to the range. So right, guys, here's a quick look at the loading on this. Of course, you got the uh, the XTP uh, 158 grain FP bullets and uh, Hodgson H110 powder. Back to the old faithful here, there CCI small pistol magnum primers, and of course, uh, Starline Brass. Can't go wrong with Starline Brass. And here is a good look at the, uh, the actual load of the bullet here. So you can see there's quite a bit of this bullet down in the case. Uh, plenty enough to get a good purchase on this thing. Still do a decent crimp on it. And uh, here is a quick look at the difference in the nose on these bullets. So. I've got the single regular XTP sitting there uh, beside the FP bases or the FP points. And, uh, you know, you can get a, a real good look at the, at the differences on these. Here is a quick look at the spreadsheet coming up a little bit later. And let's head on out to the range. All right, guys, next up is uh, a similar bullet to the ones that we've already tested. This is a Hornady 158 grain. FP flat point XTP bullet. And if you look at an XTP and an FP together, let's see if you can see the difference on that. I'll have better pictures later on, but uh, I'll show you what the difference is on this. They've taken the nose of that bullet and they've actually just kind of flattened it out a little bit to make it uh, a little bit shorter. And uh, I think this is actually considered a rifle bullet. Uh, maybe, maybe better for using in a lever action rifle. But uh, we're gonna run it and see if there's any major differences between this and the XTP. Now, this loading is a little bit hotter than my original XTP loading. Uh, my original XTP loading that we tested previously uh, is an accuracy load that I worked up several years ago. And uh, so I've actually increased the powder charge on this one a little bit. And later on, I plan on doing a follow-up video where I do the flat base bullets and the XTP bullets with the same powder charge side by side to see if it makes any difference on expansion or penetration. So that'll be an upcoming video. But for right now, let's get uh, let's get started on this one.
17.20 for the velocity. And uh, let's go see what we did. All right, guys, what I've done, I've, I've shot this gel block earlier with one of the other bullet tests, and I've got some I've got some holes in here where I've dug out the other bullets, and I've got wound tracks starting from the opposite end. But I've got the clean end of this block down here so we can see our wound tracks and just using the second block as a catch block to see what our overall penetration is. So this is the 158 grain flat point, and it does look like our expansion is retarded just a little bit what it is from the XTP from the previous test we've got, but... We did get really good expansion. We've got a really nice wound track, actually maybe a little bit deeper, uh, down about 10 inches than what we did with the 158 grain. And total run out for this bullet, looks like it's down here at about 22 and a half inches. So nice, nice little showing here in this flat base. So let's go see what it does with the six and a half inch Taurus. All right, next up is this uh, six and a half inch Taurus. with the 158 grain flat point XTP bullet. That one's really close to the edge. Let's just see if we got a catch. Uh, did not get a velocity on that. All right, guys, so our wound track is right here. We're really close to the edge on this one. I'm surprised it didn't squirt out the side, but uh, looks like we had uh, penetration opened up here by uh, two inches. We got some leg fragments, got a nice temporary wound cavity, and this bullet is spiraling. You can see the spirals. It works its way down through here, and uh, got more lead fragments coming off again, and here we are laying out here at all of 28 and a half inches of penetration. Take a look at this thing. So we did not get the expansion on this bullet that we've been seeing on the regular XTP, but we do have good expansion. So let's go back and see what it does, how the other pistol barrel hits. All right, guys, next up is the Hornady 158 grand flat point. XTP bullet out of the Ruger GP100 five inch barrel. And that one was really close to the top. I'm really working the edges here for some reason. Uh, velocity of 1215, so we did get a velocity catch on that. Let's go see if we got a catch in the gel block. All right, we did not get a catch in the gel block with that round, so let's try another one. All right, let's go see what we did with that one. All right, guys, here's the wound track for the five inch. And uh, I will note that we're not getting the expansion uh, from this flat point bullet XCP that we did uh, from the exit from the regular XTP, nor as fast as we did with the, the 20 inch rifle. So wound track tracks down through here and we do have some rotation going on and we go past the rifle bullet and it looks like we're out here at about 25 inches of penetration. This is the Ruger five inch. So we're getting good penetration. We're just not getting these things flattened out with the revolvers like we did with the rifle. 
So, uh, all right, let's go try the three and the two inch. All right, guys, next up is the Rossi three inch. It's an RP63. And we're not getting the expansion at the lower velocities with this flat point XTP that we did with the regular XTP, the 158 grain. So uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and shoot this out. And uh, I'm curious to see what the overall results are after we get everything said and done. I did not get a velocity on that one. All right, guys, wound track for this round. This is the three inch Rossi starts here. And we had very little expansion up front. This is the wound track running behind. It comes down here, it crosses down, continues to drop until we're sitting down here at about 25 and a half inches of expansion. If you can, if I can get it to focus in here. As you can see, there's very little expansion on this bullet. This looks a lot like the 110 grain uh, bullets out of the uh, out of the two inch Rossi. Uh, just the, the the cuts in the pedals opened up, and that's about where the expansion stopped on it. So let's go back and actually try the two inch Rossi and see what's going to happen. My prediction is it's going to blow out here, maybe a little bit deeper than this one had with similar expansion, or it may be a little bit shallower with similar expansion. So, all right, one way to find out. All right, guys, uh, two inch Rossi with 158 grain Hornady flat point XTP bullet. and four foot per second. Let's go see if we got a catch. All right, guys, right here's our wound track on this one. And uh, I'll just say, I've already cheated and looked at the bullet. There is uh, practically no expansion on this thing. So follows right down through here. And we are setting down here at about 28 and a quarter inches of penetration. But take a look at this bullet, guys. There is very little going on in the front of this bullet. Doesn't look like it even peeled the copper jacket all the way back. So uh, curious to get this thing out here in a few minutes and actually take a look and see what it did. So let's, uh, let's get back out to the shop here and, and, and we'll look at all these. So, all right, guys, so here is a look at the uh, the bullets after I got them out of the gel block. So, uh, going from, from right to left, we've got the 20 inch, the six and a half, the five inch, almost identical performance out of those. I think the velocity on these two were really close, actually. For some reason, either the Taurus is yielding slow velocities or the Ruger GP100 is, is actually yielding faster velocities. Uh, some something to do with the rifling cuts is my guess, but uh, for an inch and a half difference in barrel, these two uh, these two revolvers have been running really close across a lot of my different tests that I've been running. Uh, and then we go on over to the three inch, and finally to the uh, to the two inch. So right off the bat, this uh, this twenty inch rifle bullet does just exactly what we would want it to. Uh, you know, nice expansion, nice big mushroom head out there. The, the five and the six and a half inch, uh, they have opened up. This is not your typical opening up from an XTP, the standard XTP nose. Uh, those pedals normally fold back flat and uh, these have kept some sharp edges. I'll get an overhead view here in a second, take a look at those. And, uh, and then of course, almost, uh, almost nothing going on on the three inch and the two inch. Just not enough velocity there to uh, to drive this new tip design open on this XTP FP. 
All right, here's the profile shot of these uh, of these bullets now. So you can kind of see what I was talking about with the uh, with the shape of the copper uh, pedals on the six and a half and the five inch, and there's the three inch. Only very very minimal trying to open on the three inch, and actually the two inch. just barely did even start to compress on the nose. Uh, almost, almost an imperceptible change in the nose of this bullet. Maybe starting to flatten out and getting just a little bit wider in the factory load. Uh, without the rifling marks on this bullet, it, it might be easy to think that it did not do absolutely anything in the gel block, so. All right, guys, there it is. That's the Hornady 158 grain uh, flat point, the FP XTP bullet. And just from, if you've watched the other 158 grain video uh, <clears throat> and you've done any back and forth comparisons yet, probably not. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of break the ice here a little bit. <clears throat> Expansion is retarded on this one. So we're, we're two to three inches in before this thing starts to get fully opened up with, with the rifle. Uh, and the longer barrel revolvers versus that three quarter to an inch with the with the original uh, XTP hollow point design, and we're gaining penetration. So you know slower expansion on the front end, but more penetration on the back end. And uh, with the short barrel pistols, <clears throat> almost no expansion. The three inch and the two inch were basically nothing to even talk about as far as the expansion goes. So. This, uh, this bullet is designed to be more of a faster velocity, long barreled pistol or rifle bullet. Uh, will not perform well, would not be a good choice in short barrel revolvers. So keep that in mind. Uh, probably the most definitive results we've gotten all the gel block testing yet is this will not be a good short barreled revolver round. Uh, I can't say that really about anything else, any of the bullet weights that we've tested so far, but we can with this one. So uh, if you do start comparing the spreadsheets between this one and the other 158 grain load, uh, I will note that there's a difference in the, in the loadings on this. The, the powder weights were different on these two loadings, so you're gonna see some differences in the, in the velocities. Um, I had already ran the original 158 XTPs before I had this load, uh, before I really even had planned on running this one. And uh, so, at some point in the future, I probably won't do a video on it, but I may shoot uh, a round of the uh, original XTPs with the same powder loading this one has. That way we can get good velocity comparisons between the two bullets to see what they're gonna do. Uh, if I do that, I'll probably do that on my recap and just do a spreadsheet on it and not actually go through the whole video process on it, uh, splitting hairs for a few extra feet per second. So. Uh, Anyway, guys, there you go. Uh, let me know what you think about this. I, like I said earlier, I've had several subscribers asking for this video to see how this flat point compares to the, the original Jack of the Hollow Point. Uh, so here you go. We've got some answers for you now. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And, and once again, I'd love if you guys would click that link down underneath the video that says share and then copy that link and then paste it in, share it with some friends in your in your text messages or share it on some of your other social media sites. Uh, would absolutely love that. That's one of the best ways of helping grow my page is, is getting some of my videos out on some of these forums and these groups where some guys can, can see that, that, that haven't discovered my page yet and can come check it out. And, uh, other than that, guys, just, uh, again, thanks for watching. And Matt, Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.